Now that we learned about the splash screen, let's learn about the user interface. In order to do so, we're going to go over and select Create New. And after we select Create New, just take a look at this interface from a first glance. You'll notice that you have a lot of the similar panels, whether it be from Flash or Dreamweaver. So in order to learn about these more, we're going to break them down one by one and get a refresher about them. Starting with the Properties window. The Properties window gives you the attributes and the different dimensions of whatever you have selected on your stage. Currently, we have nothing on the stage right now, so all these attributes are basically responding to our stage. Now just to go a step further, I'm going to show you the tools, which are right above the Properties window. You have your Selection tool, your Transform tool, your Clipping tool, and then you have your shape tools like the rectangle, rounded rectangle, and ellipse. And then you also have the text tool. So what we're going to do is we're going to left click and just drag a rectangle on the stage really quick. And you'll notice that by doing so, my properties window is now defining the rectangle. So now all of these things below the properties, again, is relating to my rectangle. Where it's at on the XY coordinates, the width and height of the rectangle, whether we want to transform it horizontally or vertically, if we want to skew it. So there's basically several different things we can change. And then again, having the selection tool clicked, if we click on the stage, it will go right back to the properties of the stage. So before we move on, I'm just going to left click on my rectangle and delete it. The next thing up here you'll notice is this thing called the CSS background color and CSS border color. So basically this stands for cascading style sheet, which you probably learned in Dreamweaver or another internet developing course. If you end up changing these values and then you create something, you'll realize that it changes to that exact color. So now we have our background color of this rectangle, which is red. And we also have our border color, which is a light red. You might not see the border color right now. But that's one of the adjustments we can do down inside of the properties window later on. For now though, I'm going to end up clicking on this and deleting it. And we're going to move on to the next thing. Over here is your elements window. Now we're not going to talk too much about elements yet, but basically when you're creating content for an internet application or web page, you'll end up making divs, you'll end up making images, and this is basically how you end up characterizing them. That way you can find them easier. So every time we create something, it'll end up asking if it's a div or image and we can modify it later. So for example, if I click on my rectangle tool and I draw my rectangle again, you'll notice right away that it classifies it as a div. But later on, I can go back and change this for the correct coding. For now though, again, I'm going to delete my rectangle and we're gonna go down to the library. Now in Flash, your library was basically you organizing it. You could put folders inside, you could end up putting your file structure the way you want it. In Edge Animate, they actually give you five different tabs to add on. So you have your images, you have your symbols, you have your fonts, your audio, and your scripts. So depending on what file you're trying to add, all you have to do is click on the little add symbol over here, and you can add any of those five different things. To the far right, you have your lessons. So basically, if you're trying to learn or get a tutorial, you can watch these lessons. If you have no feelings towards these lessons, you can just hit the X tab here and close it completely. If you kind of want them back for later though, you can always go up to Window and Lessons. Last but not least, we have our timeline, which most of you are probably familiar with. Basically everything we draw on the stage will end up coming down here. And then we can end up adjusting the timeline, the keyframes, and things of that nature, and also play back and forth. Now you'll notice though, that unlike Flash, this timeline goes by the second. So it's not going frame by frame by frame. So there you have it. There's the basic user interface to Edge Animate. And as we continue, we're gonna explore more into each of these panels and options.